Hello and welcome to Food Safety Fridays. My name is Simon Timpley from the International Food Safety and Quality Network. Today, our special guest presenter is Hami Dosanj uh, from SCS. Global. That is correct. That's <laughs> correct, yeah. How are you doing? It's early in California, isn't it? Yeah, good morning. Yes, it is 7 a.m. in California, uh, hot and crispy California. <laughs> hot and crispy, oh, very. But not bad. Very good. And I'm in, uh, as you know, uh, ladies and gents, I'm in the UK in sunny Manchester today. So tell us where you're from, where you're joining us from. Uh, type in the sidebar. It's always good to see. Uh, I'm going to play the uh, sponsors ads now and then we'll be back for the presentation, which is about food safety culture today, just to say. OK, back in a couple of minutes. The world of food has changed a lot in the last hundred years. But one thing that doesn't change? Ensuring the quality and safe handling of food. No matter what changes are yet to come, we're proud to always be on our client's side, shaping the future of food today and tomorrow. AIB International, ever onward. you watching the um everybody saying hello in the sidebar there Hami. yes i can see <laughs> it's amazing yeah everywhere in the world True. okay let's get the slides up and uh i'll be back for the q a later and for now i'll hand you over to hamit all right uh again good morning everyone i'm here right here in california us so it's uh, morning here i'm pretty sure you guys are from all over the world and you probably have evenings Good after mornings, or it could be uh, way early, uh, late in the night. Uh, so uh, my name is Harmeet uh, Dasanj. Uh, I'm I'm working as a technical manager right here at SAS Global Services. I've been in US since 2006. I have about 16 years of uh, industry experience, <clears throat> and I came here for my bachelor's. Did my master's in uh, food safety from Michigan State, 
and also I did the uh, global uh, international food law certification in the uh, again in the food uh, laws. So I studied Chinese uh, China law, I studied European law, of course U.S. food law, and then I also did the global packaging, uh, which was really interesting for me to uh, to know about the packaging uh, in terms of uh, laws in every country. So I had a, I had a really fun uh, uh, learning exercise in there. A uh, little bit about SCS Global. SCS stands for Scientific Certification System. Uh, we are a chartered benefit corporation based in Emeryville, California and are operating on six continents with a network of subsidiaries, regional representatives, sales offices, auditors and testing lab. We are an international leader in third party certification and standard in the fields of environmental sustainability, food safety and quality performance claims. So we are proud to work with sustainability leaders across the forestry, fisheries, energy, green building, agriculture and consumer business product sectors. So that's about SCS and about me. All right. So today's webinar is we're going to talk about food safety culture. All right. Food safety culture is a hot topic, uh, new to a lot of uh, people. Uh, all uh, food industries, even not just the food industry itself, but if you are in the storage and distribution, if you're talking packaging, these are uh, food safety culture is coming in there as well. So GFSI uh, TWG Technical Working Group had been working on guidelines to establish the food safety culture around globe since 2015. The guidance was rolled into different GFSI schemes in 2018 and is currently on the way of implementation in those companies that are currently certified or would like to become certified under a GFSI standard. So BRCGS did came up with the food safety culture back in, the, in 2018 with their issue 8. SQF has came up with their new edition 9 as well. So all GFSI schemes are introducing food safety culture. So what are what is food safety culture? It defines as shared values, beliefs, and norms that affect mindset and behavior towards food safety in and across and throughout an organization. So there are three points that we need to emphasize here. Shared values. What is a shared value? Shared value is culture doesn't rely on an individual, but rather in a group of individuals. Okay. In a culture, individuals gather because they have things in common, right? Beliefs, norms, and mindset. These group of individuals that are affected by their ethical and life experience, which shape their belief, norm, and mindset. In a work environment, we are affected by the group we identify with, including our own department, co-workers, our role and position, job security, formal and informal authority, and our own habits and consciousness around the job at hand. And across and throughout an organization, food safety culture affects everyone in a company at a different levels. It will not only depend on their values, belief and norms and mindset, but and also on position and their function within the company. Different departments within the system have different responsibilities and therefore different functions within food safety culture. However, there should be a common ground of understanding and that is related to the importance of food safety. All right. Food safety culture dimensions. Okay, so these are the five dimensions that have been defined by GFSI Technical Working Group. Although all these dimensions are the key in the establishment and sustainability of food safety culture, I want to spend some, some time today talking about dimensions two and three, people and consistency, because they are the most challenging ones to work with. <laughs> As a company leaders, we establish our vision and mission more comfortably because um, because it leads to the matrix that are very parallel. We establish vision and mission, state, mission statement and then we define how are we going to get those accomplished by establishing goals and metrics that will give us an idea on how we are performing to accomplish those goals. That is what sets the direction and expectations of the company. Then communicate them to people that is engaged at all level of organization. We understand performance because we have a number that is either meeting or not meeting the pre-established matrix and this will trigger adjustments to bring the process back to its performing state. However, when it comes to people and consistency dimensions, 
establishing food safety culture implies developing the leadership at all level of the organization so like i mentioned you probably all of you already have mission and vision statements uh, you set up the expectations of the company and basically you cascade down to your employees and say all right this is how we're gonna meet those expectations but the question is what about people and the consistencies okay so let's talk about these two pillars in more detail people behavior and activities at all levels of supply chain in other words from farm to fork are critical component of a food safety culture in an organization people behavior towards food safety is heavily influenced by the competencies in food safety fundamentals providing everyone with the tools to maintain a safe food environment knowledge we implement standard we have matrix we have accountability and empowering them to use their skill set to maintain effect food safety effective food safety practices therefore if we provide the right tools to create the competency needed we should have a very very solid food safety culture right well the answer is not that simple because developing competencies and providing the right resources sets a solid foundation however the key is empowerment right as scary it may seem at times we need to empower our people to make the right decision based on their knowledge and the resources they have have at hand at all levels if we do not empower our people to make the right decision based on their competencies and the tools we have provided we will get stuck in a non food safety culture environment okay so we need to develop our people in the front line to become leaders not just front line workers this is the key right here at end of the day they are the first source of information when a food safety risk arises and also our last line of compliance before the product leaves the arm or facility and when the food is provided to the consumer so in my experience it was not until i gasped into the concept that i was able to turn around a team and start developing a food safety culture within 90 days of entering one of the messiest environments in my entire career i will tell you guys that story towards the end so let's talk about empowerment when we talk about empowerment uh we we are talking about okay if our um, our employees at the floor level you know i know management are the one who makes decisions but what about employees who are working on the floor in production in shipping receiving all these other departments do they feel empowered to raise their voice in terms of they might have really great uh, suggestions but are we giving them the right tools are we giving providing them the uh, any medium to let their concerns out and maybe that would change our whole uh, uh, culture okay so when we talk about environment uh really quick i'm going to mention here uh, i worked in a facility where their mission and vision was that every employee on the floor should be able to do the problem solving you know when we talk about issues problems we talk about problem solving usually management have that you know uh, they take uh, they have the uh, meetings and only management sits in and then we comes up with the uh, root cause and all that but what about our own employees so they they had that vision and we started to empower our employees by teaching them how to do the problem solving you know how to do the root cause using five wise and fishbone and that reflects your food safety culture that we don't want managers or supervisors to come up with their you know dealing with the issues sitting in a in, uh, in a, um, a conference room and dealing why not we just do it on the floor why not empower our employees to do the problem solving figure out the root cause and then see how it helps in you know in their empowerment and at the same time it also reflects the food safety culture and it basically helps them to identify their own issues and the uh, and the uh, solutions so we decided that management decided that in every single department guess what knew how to do the problem solving okay all right so let's take a, a closer look on the stakeholders uh stakeholders who are stakeholders it refers to everyone across all aspect of supply chain both within and outside of a company who supply support or otherwise influence that company as an organization matures into food safety culture stakeholders start having a better understanding of food safety and start sharing common food safety goals governance 
Governance is referred to all process and procedure that are established to drive the food safety culture throughout global best practices. These are strategic direction, organization structure and accountability, policies and standards, risk and issue management, culture and behavior. And the last one is communication. While communication is a self-explanatory, the communication goal is to ensure that our company's food safety strategy is received and are understood by all employees. It must occur regularly, be tailored to the organization's various audiences, accessible where the desired behavior should occur, and measured for effectiveness. Raising awareness of food safety risk among everyone in the organization is an essential role in the communication. Do you guys agree? You guys can use the chat box. The way that the importance of food safety is communicated among the people in the organization influences the development and establishment of a food safety culture. The organization will go through different stages in the process of establishing the food safety culture. Okay. The learning organization need to establish strong training program that is adapted to the competencies and responsibilities of each level of organization. And it is adapted not only their current cultural diversity, but also learning style of individuals within the organization. <clears throat> so when we talk about communication, we have great policies, we have great uh, SOPs, we have great uh, mission and vision statement. But are we even communicating to our employees? Are we cascade down to every single level of organization or it just stays right there? So, for example, when we get a food safety complaint, for example, who are dealing with those complaints? Maybe QA, food safety, uh, maybe sales, upper management. But are we engaging our employees and asking them, you know, figuring out, investigating that and see what they come up with, right? Maybe they have great ideas. We just we never just give them again the medium to communicate, right? So that's about communication. Now let's talk about food safety influencer. So now who is an influencer? Influencer is a person that has the capacity to have effect on the behavior of others, right? A good safety influencer will be a person that has a capacity that affect the people organization in the right direction when it comes to understanding and handling food safety risks. The GFSI guideline talks about the ABC model as a good tool to establish influence, antecedents, behavior and consequences. <clears throat> so, for example, training is an antecedent that prepares people to demonstrate a particular behavior. There are good or bad consequences that may result from behaving a certain way learned during the training. Now, can we influence people through leadership? Absolutely. To me, this is the best way to do it. A good way to establish food safety culture is through incentive and recognition program. Most of the people love to be recognized for the work they do, especially when we are going above and beyond within our positions and level of responsibilities. Contrary to popular belief, compensation, a raise for example, is not only the way that you recognize people. Constructive feedback, teams reward etc. are a good form of recognition as well. So. In, again, in my experience, uh, we never really had any um, monetary related, mini compensation related uh, like raise, for example, because that affects a lot of in a different manner. Uh, and it also doesn't create a great food a culture itself. So we came up with the um, appreciation board where if an employee notice someone doing great job, he or she will uh, will write on a piece of paper. And they will put on that board that thank you for watching out thank you for doing this thank you for you know for even if for the safety purposes also right so we incorporated that because we wanted to influence our employees being a positive culture and not just always like okay why you guys are always wrong and you know blame game so in order to remove move from that blame game we want to create a culture which is more towards positivity right uh, we are appreciating employees more often and not just on an annual meeting or every quarter meeting, but when you walk out in a plant, just say thank you for what you're doing. You know, we appreciate because they are the first one, like I said in the in the beginning, they are the first and the last resource of information. And if we give them the right tool, that can help a lot. Okay. So let's talk about taking a closer look in on consistency. 
okay so during my tenure in the food industry i found that consistency is the one of the hardest dimension to keep when it comes to establishing sustaining and improving food safety culture okay now consistency is defined by three element accountability performance measurement and documentation okay so let's talk about accountability as leaders we are faced to make decisions day in and day out that may affect directly or indirectly the food safety of our products agree management are making leaders are making the decisions all right but then keep in mind that when i refer to leaders i'm referring to people on top of the bottom of the organization again leadership should not reserve to the people establishing the matrix only but it should be developed and instilled in the people that are handling day to day operations as well sometimes we find ourselves caught between a rock and a hard place when it comes to making decision however we need to have the uh, doing the right thing mindset and understanding that our decisions not only can influence the consumer safety but also our level of influence others within the organization okay i remember uh, being on the early years of my career when i uh, faced one of the tough decision in my life uh, i got a call from the owner of the company was i was working to release a product which has not gone through a metal detector and i said metal detector is a ccp there is a reason there is a ccp and we cannot absolutely we just cannot do that and uh, my answer was no i cannot release this product you know this is not safe for our employees of course typical typical um uh, and i'm pretty sure most of you probably uh, uh you know had this situation they're like oh nobody have ever got sick and don't worry okay uh, we never really had any issues and you know of course all the excuses and i said oh okay so basically i said okay then my response was to him that you know what i being in this quality food safety position i have a, this oath and i have this ethics of work that you know i cannot jeopardize the safety of our uh, consumers and obviously there are jobs out there and uh, but i'm not going to place my reputation and freedom on the line for you or even anyone right so this kind of self accountability left a huge impression on the president of the company to the extent that uh, he took me to the next opportunity that improved my career uh, tenfold okay uh this kind of self accountability is what needed to be triggered to all level of the organization i remember that i would tell everyone during my trainings that i if you do not feel comfortable consuming or feeding the product you are making at your own facility uh then uh, uh you know making to your family then uh, you don't have an uh, then we have an issue because we are making the wrong decisions out there while we are manufacturing the product um all the accountabilities should be consistent with the level of authority uh, for instance it must be clear who decide to do the rework or reject uh, or to uh, reject non compliant batches you know empowerment of making the right decision should be instilled at all level of the organization it is the laborer operator who should hold self accountable for placing the right label on the right product package and to raise a concern if he or she has a wrong level okay a uh, wrong label so for example there is no need for supervisor or manager to make that kind of decision because if you have empowered your employees they can make the decision that you know this is a wrong label oh i should place product on hold why only certain employees or certain positions are only responsible for placing product on hold for example only qa for example only production uh, only you know certain uh, employees can place product on hold why not everybody cannot place product on hold when they notice something is wrong or something is off or you know non uh, non compliant can we empower our employees to do that absolutely we can explain them teach them train them what is the purpose of placing on hold it's better to place on hold rather than shipping the wrong product and then again um, we are making our consumers uh, not safe right we are responsible for their safety for their food safety so we want to make sure that again this is all about accountability making sure making putting them in a position where they make the decisions and they are the one who feel like okay you know what i am accountable for this i should make this kind of decision so in an organization where food safety culture is well established leadership through self accountability is a must 
Of course, this will vary depending on the maturity level of food safety culture in the organization. If you are new, then I'm, I'm pretty sure it's going to take a little bit longer because it's a new concept. Uh, people are still figuring out, all right, what does this really food safety culture is all about? How are we going to implement it? How are we going to teach or explain or train our employees? What about auditors? How are they going to look at it when they come to the site? Right. So there are a lot of new things with the, this concept. All right, let's take a closer look on performance and the documentation. I'm pretty sure majority of you think about all right, when it comes to documentation, there are sometimes there are gaps, right? Uh, again, uh, matrix allow the organization to measure uh, performance. So these should be well developed and clear. It also creates a sense of direction and measures the business environment. All right, documentation sustains solid decision making abilities. Documentation safeguards an organization accumulated knowledge base and eliminate the need to rely on individual employee knowledge. Now related systems may vary from small to complex, but it should be comprehensive and appropriate to the organization. So have you ever worked in a place where you are relying on the knowledge of the people because they have been in the company for about 20 to 30 years. We never really had any SOP. We never had, had any um, uh, you know any documented procedure now we are basically running to this individual over and over because he or she has the most knowledge and basically we are relying on that person and I have walked in a situation a few years back where I was like okay wait a minute what if that person got sick or something how are we so much relying why not we you know make a system why don't we build a system so I said okay you know what what I need to do is to turn around my team performance and start establishing a food safety culture at that facility because we needed that system. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's talk about my food safety culture story. But before that, I want to ask if you are a medium or even small or large company, which pillar would you like to follow? Okay, like I said, I followed those two pillars because I thought those two pillars were the most important pillars uh, when I walked and when I was working for a facility. Okay, I have many stories that I can tell you about establishing, sustaining and improving the food safety culture. However, uh, I'm going to pick that has had the most impact on me up to this date. So um, I was looking for a job because the organization I was working, it didn't align my vision of the food safety culture and I already knew if I had applied I was gonna go into mess so I got this new job and I knew uh, which only confirmed my suspicion because I got the job this is what I got into walked into a team with a low morale a low expectations for the from the for the current department leadership my staff was a mess due to lack of leadership <laughs> Since the people that work in the quality department set the tone of the facility, uh, food safety culture, the lack of leadership within the department was not setting the right expectations for the rest of the family. Uh, sorry, I'm in company. <laughs> so we had a lot of non-conformities, a lot of non-compliance around the facility. Even though my colleagues, when I used to talk to my colleagues from the other departments, they had a clear vision like, okay, you know what, food safety is a priority. Yeah, yeah we understand. But then there is no leadership to prioritize what is needed to be done to get fully compliant. Okay. So then I identified there are two things that we need to work on. First, we need to work on people in my within my department and we need to establish a system. So technically the system was established by the corporate corporation, but some part of it were not working because people were not influencing others to comply. Okay. So, so I knew I need to work on people. So let's talk about people then. So I had a great diversity and knowledge among my team. However, you know, in order to understand their capabilities and challenges they are facing, I had to start by listening. So I established what is called a listening sessions. Okay. A strategy that I learned from one of the mentors. So I said, okay, you know what, let's, let's listen to them. What are the really issues? What are the challenges they are having? Why we are not able to establish this culture where people can, you know, uh, empower they can make decisions consistent and again why they have so low morale okay so in the first learning session i formally introduce myself i ask them to introduce and i explain the dynamics of the sessions and say you know as well as my expectation so this is what 
uh, when the accountability factor came in. So then I moved on to my supervisor and I had two supervisors at the time who were not getting along. And well, that was just not acceptable. I had to start developing them into the leaders, the, the kind of leader that people want to follow and not the kind of leader where people are like, yeah, yeah, they are on this boss, you know, they have this position and they have no accountability. So I also established the rule of communication and responsibilities. Okay. It was a learning co curve for everyone because they never had this uh, dynamics. They never had any system matrix in, in uh, you know, in place where people are actually communicating, talking to each other, you know, rather than like blaming and m taking the shortcuts. So I had to change. So then I moved into the system. At that time, we were having a lot of uh, some bird infestation issues in the warehouse. So I remember the warehouse supervisor telling me that they, are ex they were expecting me to solve the issue. Like, you know, what do you want us to do? And I said, I quickly turned around and I said that one around and I said, eventually they had to take the accountability for the practices their team were implementing. But it was through leadership and making established system best practices more solid. Okay. So then I said, all right, if how about you tell me, right, you come up with this solution and I'm always, uh, always going to be there. Let's see, we have this situation. How are you going to solve with this, right? Making them accountable. And then the other thing was the change. Let me tell you, change is not easy. <laughs> change can take a lot of time. You got to have a lot of patience. Uh, it seems very easy, but it's actually not. Uh, it took a lot of leadership, mentorship, patience and hard work across the organization to start making the lay we, uh, lead way to establish a food safety culture at that facility. So we improved our performance within the quality team. Uh, tasks such as some of the equipment preventative maintenance that were not getting done by the team started to get done. And the matrix, matrix was also started to improve. So the quality team started to be more confident in making decisions on the shift and phone calls were slowly fading out, fading away. I'm pretty sure if you are in a, again, a food safety quality uh, uh, department, if you are the, and from the management side, you're probably getting calls in the middle of the night because something has to be on hold, what to do? Oh, the results came out positive, what to do, right? So because Oh, the machine, the pressurizer or, you know, the CCP failures are happening. Oh my God, everybody's on chaos. What to do? So again, if we implement this, all these changes, then you will see, okay, you know, it's working. So the uh, system's best practices started to get followed due to self accountability among my peers and the teams. So sufficient to make this uh, make difference. Well, here's our, here's my answer. So I had my people within my team coming and asking me what could they do for me to stay because uh, I was planning to kind of like move on now because uh, uh, it was just I tried my best and within those 90 days people were so happy. Uh, I knew that my new opportunity would allow me to touch many more people but uh, I had to make that decision I had to eventually move on. But the best thing is when uh, best part of all that thing that I received uh, a uh, lot of employees came to me and they said, you know what, I have, we have never seen these many changes within that short time period. We enjoyed, it was so good. We really want someone like you and, you know, someone like a leader like you. And uh, I also got like, you know, the crew, the, the um, employees are saying, you know what, we missed her. It was so good. We learned a lot. But again, so, but I got to touch a lot of people. Uh, and now I tell my stories through my uh, trainings. I mentor people in the industry about leadership. They ask me about the decisions they face. Okay. So the change, change is not easy, but you got to have a lot of um, uh, patience. That's for sure. So let's talk about the leadership ladder. Okay. Why I'm telling about this story It's not because I want to boost about my abilities or capabilities. No. My stories can be anyone's stories. I'm pretty, pretty sure you probably most of you probably have a lot of stories about leadership. Leadership is a learned skill that may come more naturally to some than to others. But nonetheless, this is a learned skill. All right. So let's talk about leadership. Leadership starts from who? From the people with people. Leadership starts with the person just being the person. 
This relates as we talk about the cultural diversity and beliefs and etc. Okay. Um, the next step is developing the skill set known as competencies. Once we have the right competencies, the structure is established. The structure relates to the matrix and the daily, weekly, monthly mode of operation we establish to meet those matrix. So once we reach the desired structural level, we need to move to influence step of the ladder. In our case, we would be influencing people about food safety. Okay. Once we reach the level of influence, then that is when we can establish systems that are functional and consistent. I always say, uh, establish a system who work, which works for you. You don't work for the system. Okay. But in order to do that, it takes a lot of, again, time. It takes a lot of patience, hard work to establish that system. A uh, couple of years, many years ago, when I started my career, uh, we, we were in basically in the fire drill situation, uh, fire situation where things were just not aligned. It was just complete mess. Uh, leadership was not uh, there. Employees were not feeling they were coming and going and, you know, performing not in the lab. And then I had to learn from them. Uh, I used to manage uh, microbiology and chemistry lab that time. And uh, I, since I was microbiologist, I was more lean towards, uh, you know, pathogens and <laughs> microbial testing. But then I had uh, opportunity to learn about chemistry, you know, aflatoxin and all, all these other tests. But I learned from my employees and I said, okay, you know what, let me see because I cannot make decision. I cannot tell someone to do if I don't know. So then I learned from them and I said, okay, you know what, show me, please teach me. And then I basically, once I learned, then I slowly, slowly, when I knew the system itself, then I started slowly, slowly building SOPs, making more structure where basically people feel like, you know what, now they have better leadership. She, she can make better sound decisions. We have, everybody have their particular skill set. So why not work with their skill set? Why not work on their competency? Why not use them, uh, you know, their competence in a better role? And once we have, then of course, uh, everything is smooth. We really don't have any issues and people are happy. Okay. <laughs> so once we so, so this, so this ladder is a cyclic, as you may know that new people that come in or people that leave, it's a dynamic process because you're probably going to have a lot of people come in. They might not be there more than six months, more than a year, two years, five years. And then you, then you have uh, new, uh, new people coming and joining your company. So it's basically, it's again, back again, you have new people, you talk about their skill, you figure out the structure, you influence them, and then you basically set up a system. Again, system is working for everything, everyone. Okay. So food safety culture cannot be established, sustained or improved if we do not establish a solid leadership foundation, starting with our people in the front line. Okay. So. At this point of view of food safety culture, from my experience is we need to, we need more leaders to establish and drive food safety culture, but we do not need the kind of leader that we see in inspirational quote circulating around social media. What do I mean by this? We need the kind of leader that leave its desk and take its vision to the cellular level of the organization. It is the kind of leader that transform others. And I call this transformation leadership, which do not be confused with micromanagement. We are not talking about micromanagement, talk, letting every single thing know, okay, what is happening? Show me this, you know, uh, what is the next step? And we are talking about over here in terms of solid leadership, transformational leadership. When you go out there in your facility, again, in your plant, are you influencing your employees? Are you influencing, are you making sure the food safety culture is being sustained? Okay, so it's very important we talk about leaders. So I'm talking about kind of leader that provides resources, but is also willing to mentor others in the other professional field and in the personal level. Okay, um, so I remember this uh, vividly. Uh, my manager at one of the facility I worked at, uh, really nice gentleman. We because we used to work uh, well, we used to get along very well. But he was a really good mentor. Well, we had our differences and we talked about a couple of, we, uh, we, we had a conversation what two months ago and you we were talking that we did had our differences, but I respected that man as much as I respected, he respected me. 
it wasn't the fact that he was my boss but because he took the time to mentor me in the simplest way possible he gave me a book that changed my life and i took that what i learned from him to that job three years ago it was because of his mentorship and the teachings on that book i was able to start turning around a team that had no hope and starting to establish a food safety culture that seemed to be lost in the system okay so this is that's why i'm uh, we're talking about it. it's more it's very important to have a leadership here okay again you might say well top management is a great leader okay yeah they're great leaders but in the in the terms of what about the at the floor level at the cellular level of the organization do we have any leader there who can influence right even the uh, and also from the top management itself okay are they are we really are they going visiting the plant are they saying something i noticed from my work experience when top management senior management walk in the plant and they just just say thank you for doing what you're doing or i really appreciate those words go very long way rather than just walking around and not even saying sometimes i've noticed also like management like don't not even uh, you know acknowledging or not even answering to good morning so we want to change that we want to be a transformation leader where employees notice they're like oh you know what i want to be to that position i want to be that person i want to influence i want to teach my employees mentor someone else which can reflect which can uh, reflect your food safety culture okay so is food safety culture achievable once we establish a food safety culture the system will mature through continuous improvement skill and consistency there will be a curve of adaptability but if we are consistent on our decision the people we are leading will get used to the process and perform accordingly as we train people on problem solving and empower people to make decision they become more agile over time and can adapt easier to changes in the environment and sustain the process okay so like i said for example you guys can you probably have gamba walks right in the gamba walks having employees involvement talking to them about what is happening in the facility or in the product then they can feel more involved and in, also in the decision making uh empowerment like i mentioned uh you guys can use the uh, problem solving exercises and show them how to find the root causes how to investigate the problem how to solve within right there rather than going again to the management sitting in the conference room and they are the one who's making decisions for you they are the one who's finding the root cause maybe they are missing something can we do that can it could reflect right i'm uh, you can have the like i said in the gamma walks you can talk about production food safety quality people cost you know we talk about this lean systems also so engaging them is very important and the last thing regarding the food safety culture uh, when i was um, uh, in the facility, in the company when i used to work uh, we i did it food safety survey or i call it a perception survey um, i am pretty sure you most of our, you have already implemented or you are going to food safety survey i did that i did a I created a very simple food safety survey and i distributed among uh, uh, are uh, the uh, employees and i also did uh, for the senior management okay so if you ask your senior management everything is going great we don't have any issues and everything's fine yes we are committed for food safety okay but when i reach out to the anonymous these were anonymous surveys so we have no idea where it's coming from but it's coming from you know employees so we did uh, production we did qa we did receiving shipping maintenance sanitation you name it every single employee did those anonymous survey so when when i got those surveys guess what management was on a different level but the employees do not have do not agree with the same level they 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 think that food safety is a food safety department responsibility and not their responsibility so for example in the labeling department packaging department production department uh, they don't re they don't think and i said hmm interesting uh, there are many questions so i call it again not food safety survey but i call it perception survey and i want you to see all right how why why our employees perception is so different than the senior management or the mid level mid management right we're talking about management uh, sorry managers and supervisors or even lead so why are they different so when i took that survey i came up with that oh 
it's it's completely different answers what we got from mid and the senior management and what employees are saying their perception was completely different okay uh they think that management have to make the decisions they realize that if food safety is just food safety department problem <laughs> they are the one who's gonna who are gonna make the decisions they are the one who are responsible for that so we had to and there are many again it's about about 15 20 questions uh about that and what we came up we ha i had to come up with these strategies and i had to close those gaps now so i look at it in terms of gap assessment there's a senior management on the other side we have a uh, man uh, these employees on the other side all right how are we gonna close this gap you know what are the strategies so i had to come up we came up with different different it's about training it's about you know training teaching uh, giving them the again empowerment tools having making them responsible having make them accountable and then basically and of course it was still an ongoing project it's not that simple and easy that you are going to be done in two or three months okay so that so that's how we were achieving our food safety culture okay so with that i am done uh, <laughs> thank you hami brilliant excellent presentation and as you could probably see lots of questions in the sidebar so uh -huh. let's just take a few i know you might have covered some of it in your content but maybe to reiterate as well so karen how can i demonstrate that we have food safety culture in the plan all right so karen uh, regarding in the plan uh, and i got these lot of questions that okay how are we going to demonstrate and how are we gonna so you should document your food safety culture meaning what is your what is your expectations okay what are your objectives you might have some objectives right there so make sure you document and you come up with the uh, a matrix so for example we had three or four objectives that we wanted to achieve in terms of food safety culture one is how are we going to achieve like for example those surveys so the surveys will get out then i recorded all the results so everything has to be documented okay so uh, that's how you're going to demonstrate to your auditors and again auditors uh, they are not because it's a subjective okay this is not something objectively you can just say okay yes and no this is more subjective so when you go out in the facility and if i'm for example an auditor and i'm asking your employee okay so uh, why do you get like for example a lot of breakdowns in the facility and yeah you know what this machine is always breaking down and management doesn't help us and this and that i'm like ah, that gives me Food safe, that gives me a uh, snapshot of the culture itself, right? So that's how you can demonstrate, making sure employees are understanding, making sure you're documenting what are you planning to do, have some maybe three or four objectives listed and work on that. Again, you might not be able to achieve those objectives within a week or month or two months, but if you have planned together, you can demonstrate that, that yes, we have uh, figured that out, that these are the things we need to work on. Okay, super. And uh, Vinod, what what is the key role of top management uh, in building food safety culture? All right, that's a good question. <laughs> <laughs> so we talk about top management or the senior management. Yes, they're committed. They're committed, right? Commitment is a big word when we talk about. But the key role of the management is to understand, again, accountability, consistency, and then empowering employees. Like I said, as a top management they probably understand culture better. Again, you know, sitting in the offices is not really a food safety culture. We've got to go out there, we're going to influence, we have to empower our employees. So the key role of top management commitment, uh, com uh, role, top management is to give your resources to build that culture, okay? Uh, again, uh, it's not going to be in overnight, two months or even six months, but it, it has to be a curve, it has to be, you know, moving in a right direction where we are saying, you know what, we need to work, we need to establish a culture where employees feel like they can raise the concern if they notice something and basically build that. It could be through the trainings, it could be uh, uh, using their competency or maybe enhance their competency level, right? So that's how you can engage your top management commitment in building food safety culture where, okay, we notice this department or XYZ employees, they're there could be great leaders maybe we want to give them the tools to establish and make sure the food safety culture has been sustaining okay thank you and Vinod again uh, what are the motivating factors that can be useful to create good food safety culture in the organization 
I guess at di there's different levels and different motivators at each level, I guess, is there? Well, the motivating factors could be yourself and, uh, you know, leaders, uh, the, uh, um, the management itself. You can be the motivating factor where you're going out there, listening to them, right? See what they really want to do. I have noticed an employee have a great lot of experience, but they are just working in a department where we are not using their skills. We are not using their competencies, such a waste of their, you know, uh, their experience. So when I noticed that one employee had a lot of experience and I said, what, are she, what is she doing? In his, not that it's not a valuable, but how can we use that experience or, you know, their uh, knowledge in a different way, some, somewhere they really fit in. So I had to talk to my management. I said, you know what, we, we got to think about not all employees are on the same level. Everyone is different, right? Everybody is bringing, coming up with a different backgrounds. So why don't we motivate them to get, maybe it could be a, um, uh, an, uh, you know, uh, uh, what do you, right word, um, give, uh, giving in a different position. Maybe we enhance their position, right? It could be that, oh, you know, you fit in different departments. So there are a lot of motivating factors that you can create a food safety culture. Again, through trainings, talking to employees, what they think. Maybe they want to have, they have great ideas, like I said, but they just don't want, because of the fear or because of fear of losing their job or because they feel like, oh, if I say something, I might be in the HR. <laughs> so I'd rather not say anything, right? So those, there are a lot of things that you can use to create a culture. Okay. And, okay. and it starts from you. It does everything. Okay. okay. And uh, Finnard, uh, what are the key what's factors the key to establish and implementing food safety culture uh, in a multicultural um, working environment? Any um, thoughts? Uh, I have worked, again, uh, right here also, we have different uh, diversity, right? A lot of people coming from different cultures. Uh, the way you talk, the way you perceive, right, is might be slightly different from the other, right, because of the diversity, because of the culture. Uh, it could be, my gesture might be offensive to you because in the, if that's your culture, right? That's it. So then I think with, when you have, you got to respect all the cultures, you have to make sure you respect all the employees at the same level. Uh, make sure that we are not being biased towards one person. So try to establish a culture where people are, again, they don't feel like, yo, you know what, because they know, well, I'm, for example, I'm bilingual. I have worked in a facilities, we have very heavily involved Spanish employees, but I started to learn Spanish slowly, slowly. Maybe I had translator. I don't want to make them feel like, because I don't know their language, I'm not available to you. Even my, uh, uh, my phones, my SOPs were in a bilingual, you know, bilingual language, Spanish and English. Because I don't want to limit my employees because forms are in English. Okay, what do I do, right? So providing them the resources, especially when you're working with a multicultural people working, then providing them the resources and have a listening ear in a, their language where they're comfortable. That will be a great uh, key factor uh, to influence them to make sure that they are working together. It's not a blame. The thing is, how can you work together? That's the whole idea. Exactly. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, Vinod, another question. Uh, do you think it's useful to set up a food safety culture team within the organization? Culture team need to be formed to continue improving. You can have it. And I think, for example, HACCP team could be a food safety culture team. In a HACCP team, you have uh, different, different departments, multi, multidisciplinary team. You have production, you have sanitation, you have shipping, you have QA right you have food safety so that team can also be a food culture team where basically they say you know what HACCP is working and you know food safety now let's transform and improve our culture itself since it's a multidisciplinary team you don't have to think about okay who do i have in my team well why don't we use the same team and ask their opinion ask them how are we going to transform and how are we going to implement this uh, uh, culture how we change this culture to get to the point where it's a happy healthy environment where people are accountable and they can make decisions on their own okay it could be a power issue now and i'm not going to get to that where management think that because they are powerful positions they are the one who should be making the decision well that's a separate issue now <laughs> right but in my my experience i think my suggestion would be you can use the HACCP team itself and make a food safety cultural team right there Okay, great. And Isan, uh, as we know, the 
top management are interested in money, uh, how can you link uh, and switch them on? You know, what uh, perhaps talking about finances and, and things. Well, <laughs> everything is money. End of the day, it's a business, right? I mean, it is what it is. But I don't, uh, I, um, I don't think that right away we should jump on the cost, okay? Because if any, any, whether it's a small organization mid or even the, and I have worked in a multi-billionaire organization too, cost is something that like, ooh, okay. How can we maybe transform in a bit pieces where it basically doesn't start with the cost? Okay, we need to do that. We need to have that. We need to have that. Can we work in the resources what we have and start and maybe, again, you can do a problem solving. Why do we need that cost, right? And show them, present your, uh, uh, your uh, case to them. This is the reason why we are basically asking for, you know, resources in terms of money uh, we need to implement or we need to buy an equipment or something. I worked in a facility where if you have a, uh, when, it, when there is a project related to the cost, you are supposed to do a problem solving or we call it A3. So present your case to the management and then to the management feel like, yes, then they are more than happy to do that. Because every time we think about, oh, we need to buy this, we need to do, have that, we need to have more employees figure out first the main the root cause right? <laughs> and then go from there and i and i understand if it is especially it's a family business where uh, very limited em uh, employees or family itself is making decision that would be a little bit hard or challenging but mm. i think if you basically present your case in a more structured way and show them why then i'm i'm i yeah I, feel like they will be more than happy and be more open about it yeah i, I mean uh the cost of failure though customer complaints credit notes and and recalls i mean mm -hmm. we, we we've discussed culture before and you know it always comes up the peanut corporation in america ultimately uh those uh senior management quality management went to jail for yes. poor food yes. safety culture let's say of the organization that's a great story right here if you look at it in 2008 what happened with peanut butter corporation the owners were in prison the food safety manager got two years of prison because that person deliberately changed results right and that's just not it's beyond ethics that's something you're not supposed to do that but you, again you can feel that pressure if you are my boss and you're telling me to release the product and knowing it's not supposed to be then you feel pressure all right should i do it or you know the consequences and again, if you're not, if you are in a position, sometimes you have to make hard decisions and you have to move on, right? Because it just doesn't align <laughs> with your vision. Exactly. Um, is it possible to measure the maturity of food safety culture? Um, to, how, how would you go about demonstrating that your culture was improving? Let's say. Uh, again, if you have a documented way of that you have documented your plan then yes you can show that okay but when it comes to again like i said it's a very subjective topic so for example when i walk in your facility when i'm talking to the employees i get a sense of your culture itself okay our employees open about it they are talking to me as a for example if i'm a, an auditor and i'm not an auditor by the way i'm just acting <laughs> so okay are they really comfortable are they saying that yes they can make decisions so for example when we talk about uh, your ccp operators what are you doing? What are you, you know, can you show me what happens if the CCP failures, right? And if there's like, oh, I don't know, I'm just right here doing my job. Okay. But are we making, are we going a little bit more beyond? Can they make decisions that yes, we can stop the production. Yes, we can those make decisions, right? That shows the culture right there that, okay, employees know what they're doing for one. They know their jobs, plus they also know accountability. They know what are the consequences. So before it gets too late, yes, they can make those decisions. So I feel like in terms of measure your maturity of your uh, food safety culture is walking out there. When you do the internal audits, I notice this. When we do the internal audits, we are focusing on the management. So if, for example, I'm coming to do an internal audit on uh, production, why am I talking to manager or supervisor? Why am I not going to the floor and asking the employees? That shows the culture right there. Okay, if I'm looking at my manager, I'm scared because if I say something, I might get fired or I might get in trouble. That shows the culture right there, right? To make that they are comfortable talking to the real auditor. And I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. When I used to go do the internal audit, 
uh, employees knew that she gonna come randomly she will ask the question they ha they were because we created this kind of culture where they're like you know what they were mentally prepared that there's nothing to be worried about it's okay to be wrong but at least they're trying right so i would really say that that go out there please do the internal audit on not just the management itself show me your sop show me procedures they're already in there we need to go beyond now the procedure sops we can have the access it's already there but are those sops working or not that's the next step where you're only going to find when we go out at the plant talking to the employees observations right yeah uh, physically yeah. Obser observing the employees and see what are they doing yeah. I, I i've found in the past visiting plants that you know if the operators are approachable smiling seem happy in the job engaged you know that's a good indicator isn't it that they, they they don't feel oppressed and frightened you know if they that's a good thing yeah. just be I mean, happy I, yeah, yeah i was walking uh, in the packaging uh, where the labeling department and the employee mentioned oh when they were uh, weighing the bin the bin is not only 200 pounds and he said no 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 uh, we we have to place on hold and i said what happened he said well the bin is not only 200 pounds it's actually 21 something so that's not correct i was so happy just to know that that he was he's raising his concern he's making the decision oh no this is wrong otherwise he'd be like oh that's not my problem let it go right <laughs> so so that's what it just like like you know what wow the other thing is for example sometimes management walk, walks in the production for example and they forget their hair net because they're busy, they just don't realize. And one of the uh, my QA uh, supervisor mentioned, oh, look, uh, boss is coming. And I said, why don't you reach him out? Ask, tell him that please stop, wash your hand, put your hair net. But she's like, no, you go for it. I said, no, <laughs> you have observed, that's go for it. I'm right here if something happens. I'm, I have your back, but you gotta go. And my boss called me later and he said, I, I was so happy that employees are actually coming up to me before i have never seen you know employees coming in saying anything well that's a food safety culture right there they they can raise they, without any fear they can come to you and say you know what sorry but you're sorry but not sorry but you gotta go back <laughs> wash your hands put the right ppe on right exactly spot on uh david um basically when you've done frequent trainings have not worked what else can you do so you got to find out why frequent trainings are not working. So find the root cause here. The training itself is so complicated. Are we providing in the right language, for example, if it is a multicultural, you know, why it's not happening? Training, who is providing the training? Are we just giving the training, reading, and they have them sign the log and say the training is done, right? You got to find the root cause here. Because once you find that, that is going to work, okay? What are the other tools that can uh, help to change the frontline workers? Making them accountable. Ask them, okay, if the training is not working, ask them random questions. What would, what would you do if there's something going on or something doesn't work, right? Mm -hmm. Look at their understanding. I, and again, that's a great question because I have myself came in a situation where maintenance department, I asked them a simple, very simple question. What is a food grade and non-food grade? Uh, you know if they have any chemicals or any oil and the gentleman mentioned we don't have any food grade and I was like what <laughs> so I had their training record with me so I said they signed already so I went back and I that was my non-conformance and I said to manage ma my interest manager and I said hey by the way when I was asking them random question they said uh, we don't know the difference and he said what so guess what he went there he did the training and the corrective action was the training was not enough. I said, all right. One month later, I talked to the same department, same question. Guess what? They have no idea. And the maintenance manager gave me the same corrective action. This time I rejected that corrective action. I said, no, training is not the issue here because it cannot be the same root cause here. You got to find the root cause. How are we providing the training? Are we giving them in their, their appropriate language? Are they understanding or I'm just reading, reading, reading? They're like, yeah, yeah, listening. And then they're signing the log and that's it. Are we calling that as a training? And if the, once the training is done, can you do a competency test, right? Why not a competency test and check their knowledge? For example, if you are doing a frequent training, maybe you want to do a simple quiz. 
you know, not putting on the spot, but maybe like something simple quiz. Ask them simple competency test and see, okay, then you can determine are they competent in doing their, their, that job or not. So I hope that will help. Please look into your training methodology also. How, how are we training them? What are the methods are we using? Why are they not comfortable? Why are they are coming with the same situation over and over? Right? So okay. dig deeper, please. <laughs> okay, very good. And also, to be an influencer, sort of middle management, what are some characteristics or traits, you know, uh, uh, perhaps skills that you need uh, within yourself uh, to be able to do that effectively? Being humble, being nice, smile on your face. Just say simple thank you. That will go a very long way than being an arrogant because I'm management. Because I've seen employees are saying good morning and they are just ignoring the fact that, you know, they are not a top management. Again, small, small, your personality, your the way you, you know, carry yourself, that helps a lot. I would really suggest to being again listening eye uh, i might be in a grumpy mood because i have something going on in my home my at home i might not be able to perform my job because uh, because a lot of stress i'm bringing to the world it, it's not the, because i'm stressed at you know at my home uh, sorry at work but it could be i'm bringing that baggage maybe you want to listen for five seconds five minutes hey how's everything going you know and you will see that will quickly change and i myself have seen that i came in that worked in a facility where management was like wow you go mid mid management top management the main vp of the company will walk and people are just smiling like you know their faces are so happy and i've also worked in a company where man name is like why do i have to say thank you they are supposed to do their they, they are there to do a job and i'm like what <laughs> you know you feel like wait a minute just saying thank you is not gonna do anything you know it's nothing wrong with it but it's just that your personality you got to be very humble you got to be happy and make sure they are not just the employee and they should be and i heard this they should be happy they have a job mm. that's just a, one of the negative characteristics or traits you can ever see and that's really bad for your food safety culture they should be happy they have a job i'm like interesting. <laughs> yeah uh okay job uh talking about jobs uh job uh what about rewarding incentives uh, to, to promote the food safety culture drive? So uh, uh, we have done that. And when we talk about rewarding and incentives, when it's a monetary, meaning when a money is involved, then it becomes a uh, race for uh, getting more money, you know. So we decided that not to have a money related anything. So in terms of rewarding, can we do that? So let's say if I am the I am the winner, maybe you want to have a lunch with me with the in in front of every employee. Just sit right here in the lunch room, you know, have a lunch or maybe bring them a lunch and just have a good conversation for thirty minutes. Can we do that? That's gonna, that's rewarding right there. How many management team actually have a lunch with their employees? How many have you seen that culture? Anyone? <laughs> Probably not many. Right, yeah. and I have seen. Uh, a facility where they don't have a different uh, break rooms guess what they have only one break room where vp all the way to the uh, all the level of employees are going to eat in the same lunch room regardless of their titles mm -hmm. and i was like i was blown away i was like wow that is so nice because now they're talking to each other oh hi how are you you know what are you eating just simple conversation so you can do that and the other thing, like again buying their lunch maybe sitting with them in a random lunch the other thing is uh, you can have an appreciation board or something where if I notice uh, some employee uh, doing something like, for example, if I say Cheryl doing a great job, I'm like, thank you, Cheryl. And I'm saying thank you. And the reason for my thank you and, and you guys can do this uh, like a random uh, one person can be picked right at the end of the day. And then you can maybe get them. Uh, I We did this. So we had a shaded parking lot. OK. And the rest of the parking lot was not shaded. Maybe we'll give you a one month shaded parking spot, <laughs> right? It's only reserved for you. Again, no, not, there's no cost, but it just helps employees like, oh, wow, you know what? That's my parking spot. Do not, that, that, I earned that parking spot. <laughs> so again, yeah. think about some different unique ways where employees feel like, you know what? Wow. And mm. not just the money because money quickly change into something else. And then he's like, no, 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 this is going. And then HR gets involved. They're like, wait a minute. 
whatever you guys are doing, you start working. Now it's a different, right? It has changed. So think about something simple, easy, parking spot maybe, or having a lunch with them, or you know, thank you to them, thank you board. Uh, we used to randomly have hundred thank you thank yous in a month, and we'll pick something random employees who won for the month employee of the month, something like that. So you guys can use that to to create that drive. You know, if you notice anything, how many employees are actually raising concern, right? So you can do that just and not just buying expensive things money fifty dollar gift card and then just changes very quick so you want to yeah, come yeah. up with something unique something that drives them okay uh, robert just mentions consider food safety culture as the way the team behaves when no one is watching um bridget says at my job the top management eats with everybody and it's fantastic um, it is it is um okay Vinod, uh, whether employee engagement programs can motivate employees towards improving food safety culture in the organization? I'm not sure I understand that. Yeah, it can. Employee engagement program will, can motivate improving the culture. That's a massive thing, communication yeah, and engagement. Yeah. But see, see, this is a thing I think someone mentioned. When management is not there, and I'm going to say when food safety QA is not on the floor, everybody's relaxed. And as soon as you see that person, everybody's changing, right? <laughs> because you know, oh, she's walking around and she's going to look for it. That's the culture we got to change. They are doing their job all the time the same manner. Their behavior shouldn't change because now you are on the floor. Okay, And it happened to me. As soon as they see me, they're like, oops, she's right here. She's going to look for something. She's like, you know, and I'm like, hmm. But I wonder what happens when I'm not there, right? So then we had to create that they, they should be okay, relaxed, comfortable, when, whether, regardless whether management is watching them or not. That's the culture you want to build. Perfect. Right, on that note, I think we're going to end it because we've almost run 15 minutes over. Brilliant, uh, Hami. It's the first. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Thank everyone, you. again, for having me here. Okay, that was Hamid Dosanj uh, from SCS. And uh, now all, all there is to do is um, issue your certificate in the sidebar. So as you know, the regulars, you've got to either print and sign it yourself with your name or uh, edit it in, let's say, uh, Microsoft Paint. It's an image of the certificate. So you have to do it yourself because... I can't do that for how many people did we have registered today? Mm -hmm. 1,562. So mm -hmm. I, that would be a full-time job and more for me. So, yeah, please do that yourself. Uh, thanks for your attendance today. Thanks for engaging with the uh, presentation, asking questions and joining. It makes it really uh, fantastic. Um, and we'll see you on the next one. Friday, best day of the week. Um, enjoy your weekend and uh, speak to you all soon.